there would be no funding for them, no local funding for them. So if they're locally funded, they would have to close on April 1st, 2012, at the end of hypothermia season. They can't close it before then because there's a legal obligation in D.C. to keep them open, to shelter folks when it's below 32 degrees. <coughs> the second effect would be that they would have to change a long-standing policy of sheltering homeless families <coughs> on non-hypothermic days who have no, absolutely no safe place to stay. So in the past, they've said, even though there's only a right to shelter when it's below 32 degrees, we're not going to let a child sleep on the street. And so we're going to shelter that family if they absolutely are going to be on the street if we don't shelter them. Well, they've already changed that policy. And we're seeing families sleeping in bus stations, sleeping you know, outside, sleeping in very unsafe places, remaining in domestic violence situations, um, because they've, they're not letting any families in shelter right now until November 1st, until the first hypothermic day. And then as soon as hypothermia season ends next year, they won't be letting any families in shelter after hypothermia season. Um, I, have, I have one quick question. Uh, as far as the uh, shelters go, how, how does that, you know, I'm, I mean, I've heard Spray Swan say that, he, that the Department of Human Services is not the housing authority. And so I'm just wondering, with these cuts they're talking about in homeless services, how does it affect the housing authority and how many how many vouchers do they want to have available, or how many people are they planning on housing in right. F, and F, F, yeah. the next, in, you know, 2012? That's a really good question. Uh, I mean, so housing, local funding for housing is being level funded, and I think the same for federal, right, Eric? I, no, there's not uh, well, really be any new well, housing. Well, the, the, with, the, with the federal deal, uh, well, I know who's dealing with that mainly is uh, Empower DC. You know, they're a grassroots nonprofit, but, but, uh, Anyway, federally, I think that they're going to cut like like five billion or, or five point three billion dollars from from HUD housing, and, and there's this fear that we're going to lose seven hundred and fifty thousand units across the country, and that here in D.C. we might lose five thousand HUD units, and, and then and then five thousand more public housing units, and, and so, and and th th those cuts are going to affect a, a, as of October first, you know, of, of this year. And so that, that, that's a separate issue because what we're doing right now is just local cuts. And then when you add in the federal cuts and, and, and them cutting HUD, well, they, they're, they're cutting HUD 202, which is for elderly people, or an 811 for, for, for disabled. And, and, uh, and then they're also cutting some of the regular HUD vouchers as well. And, and what they're doing is you have some people who are dying and, leave, and leaving that way. And then you have other people who, who maybe have – have an improved situation, and, and so they're getting out of HUD, you know, in, but by improving their situation. But but a, as they as they die or as they leave HUD for whatever reason, their vouchers are, are being destroyed and not, and not being given out to anybody new, and, and so they're they're downsizing in that way. But there, there's also this fear that there's going to be some people who actually do get put out. Some folk who have been put into HUD housing are actually going to get put out of the HUD housing. And you, know, you know, Eric, you kind of, you kind of like you're throwing me off because you're saying HUD. I'm talking about the DC Housing Authority. Well, well okay. Well, okay. well, is, well, is well, let, well let, let me clear that up because DC Housing Authority gets gets their money from HUD, and so so okay. HUD, HUD and DC Housing Authority are are almost well, well, not, not, okay. not not really the same thing, but 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 DC Housing Authority gets what gets their vouchers from HUD, and so they they're, they're actually the, the the local administrators of HUD. <laughs> right. Okay. I got you. But I think the bottom line is yeah. the best case scenario <clears throat> is that. Keep, that there won't be any new housing at all for folks to be able to move out of shelter into, but there will people will be maintained in the housing they're in. That's 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 the basic question I was asking. That's I, I mean, think the bottom line is the best case scenario is that people won't be taken out of housing they're in, but there won't be new housing spots. So but, at the same time as we're you know we're sort of reducing the shelter system to just hypothermia and CCNV, um, we're you know we're also really reducing the amount of new housing subsidies. There are a lot of new housing subsidies in FY11. There won't be any new ones in FY12. And I, I should also point out that that uh, th this past year, well, you know, they, they count the homeless every year. And uh, f previously, we've been getting like two or three hundred more homeless people every year. Now, in, in 2011, 
we only increased the homeless by, by seven people. It went from 6,539 in 2010 to 6,546 in, in 2011. And the reason for, for only increasing by seven people is because of supportive housing. And, but I spoke to Sue Marshall, and, 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 and Sue Marshall, who is the, 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 the director of TCP, which is the Community, the community Partnership for the Prevention of Homelessness, they, they actually run most, most of DC shelters. Well, she was, she was saying that if we don't increase the funding for supportive housing and create more supportive housing, then we're, we're, we're going to lose all of our gains. I mean, the, the folk who are in the housing already are okay, <laughs> but what's going to happen is if you don't increase the supportive housing, then, then folk are going to become homeless faster than you house them, and next year you might have 10,000 homeless people as opposed to 6,500. And so, so you know, <clears throat> If we don't house folk faster than they become homeless, then you aren't going to decrease the, the, the number of homeless. So with that, and, and you have any questions or comments, or who else wants to, you know, say something here? So, so I, I mean, I think that um, uh, we could review just some of the other cuts real quickly, and then I think we should uh, talk about um, some Organizing. of the events that are planned to get the council to change. Uh, uh, this direction that they're heading in um, and then to talk about from the group here what are your ideas to get let homeless people know of what's going on and then telling yeah. them yeah. Uh, give them an opportunities to get involved yeah. how can we do that um, so uh, if we could just if you see the cuts in the mayor's budget um, I just want to review just a, what, a couple other cuts that could affect people who are homeless um, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about housing already um, in terms of the rent subsidies and the housing trust fund. Um, housing trust fund helps build new affordable housing in DC and uh, there's been some cuts there. Also, Eric mentioned before interim disability assistance. If, if you know people who have applied for social security because they have a disability and can't work, IDA, uh, interim disability assistance is the program that uh, helps uh, give them 270 a month while they wait for their SSI application to be approved, which can take sometimes two years. But that program is being eliminated right now in the current budget. Um, so that's something of interest to uh, especially people who um, are homeless. Um, some of the other things on here are the uh, cash assistance for families with children, um, people who have been on temporary aid for needy families for 60 months or more, five years or more, are getting their benefits reduced. And then um, mental health services for children and other people, the core service agency funding is being decreased. So like green, your green door, your community connections, funding for that, those services are being cut. And then childcare, for people trying to get back to work who need assistance finding childcare um, or support with childcare, that's another thing being cut. So um, that's just a very brief overview of the cuts. Um, I don't want to dwell on them too long, but uh, is there are there questions about any of these things? Does uh, does this affect uh, DC <coughs> Alliance uh, insurance? It, there there is a cut to DC Alliance. What they're going to have is people uh, have to um, every six months um, they have to go into the office uh, to basically uh, reapply. reapply for Alliance. So every six months, if you can go in and bring documents that show that you're a DC resident and uh, maybe someone else knows a little bit more about the Alliance cuts, but um, those are, they're trying to get people to move from Alliance to Medicaid basically. And they're doing that by having people uh, recertify every six months. Yes. So what, what about the people that are already on IDA? Are they talking about, are they getting cut too? That's a very good question. If you're on IDA, uh, they're talking about um, probably October 1st of this year, they would be cut off mm -hmm. IDA. Uh, so, and, yeah, so, uh, and it's a program, you know, that's a successful program. Money comes back to the district. It's, it's, uh, it's about 40% of the money. They're, they're just, if you've applied and you're on the wait list, you know, they're probably going to um, stop the wait list pretty soon. Um, any other? Yeah. <coughs> Whoa. So, so when we talk about actions, maybe that's something to bring up. Uh, 
Yeah. She she mentioned uh, do you, you ten cities. Ten cities. If they're not going to have us, they shouldn't object to us forming a ten city. Well, the short the short answer to that is for, for the past two weeks, I, I've actually witnessed them tearing down some some, some of these sidewalk encampments. So like you, you see these homeless folk that they have these these big <coughs> ten ten twenty foot long uh, setups on the sidewalk. I've actually seen them tearing that down over the past couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, on the same day as the ICH meeting, there was a guy right, right outside of CUM that, that had his big setup. He's been there for like a year, and, and, and they tore his, tore his thing down right after the ICH meeting. Well, they should give us the area then if they don't want to, you know. So are there any other questions about the I mean, why not? Yes. I think, I, just to follow up on the tent city idea, I think one idea to get around the city taking stuff down is to find a private, uh, like a church or something that would yeah. let you set it up mm -hmm. in their parking lot because the city can only take it down if it's on, you know, in a public park or public property or a sidewalk. Right. But I think it's a very good idea to maybe try to uh, find a sympathetic church mm -hmm. that would allow mm -hmm. people to camp out in the parking lot and also one that's prominent, maybe downtown or something, because I think that would send a really well, strong message. Why don't we go? Yeah. Uh, uh, area where there's a lot of land. That's yeah, but that somebody owns, <coughs> who would that let you do it? I thought you could own property in D.C. I think I'll be able to that. I think you can own property. You can't own property in D.C. Yeah, you can't. I own a house in DC. Yeah. You own the property, you own the house. You don't own the house. I mean, sure. You own the house. Yeah, you own the property. You own the property. You own the property. But you have, right. But just like I, I do, just like a church, uh, a church would own their property in the sense that they can do what they want with it. They could allow uh, anybody they want to keep in their parking lot. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
not a um, kind of politically attractive option to simply say raise more taxes, that that's not going to be successful. So instead, one thing that, that you all could do when you talk with council members